Hi everyone, in this video we're going to do an induction proof and the best part of this video is that I haven't even tried this problem. I have put in zero effort into doing this problem and I'm just going to do it right now and so we'll see what happens. So the question is to prove, okay, we're going to prove that 1 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 2 factorial plus dot 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 plus n times n factorial is equal to n plus 1 factorial minus 1, okay? Whenever, whenever n is a positive integer. So basically we're proving this um, for all positive integers. Now I am going to rewrite this in a different way just so I can think about it and you know figure it out because I haven't done this problem. So solution or proof. Note, we can write this as, we can use sigma notation or summation notation, and um, let's use, I guess I can use, I'll use k. k goes from 1 to n, and then here we have k times k factorial, right? That should be that looks correct, right? That should be the left-hand side, right? 1, 1 factorial, that's the first term. 2, 2 factorial, yeah, it looks good. And this should be equal to m plus 1 factorial minus 1. Okay, that's what we have to prove. So this is the claim, okay? So this is our statement. This is our s sub n. And in mathematical induction, which is what we're going to use, um, you prove something about a statement, which we're calling s sub n, and we have to show it's true for every positive integer n. That's what we have to do. Sometimes people will use this notation too, p of n or pn, whatever. Different books use different notation to indicate the statement. So we're going to prove that this statement, which is this one, is true for all positive integers n. Okay, so step one is the base case. In the base case, we have to prove it's true for the smallest number that we're interested in working with. In this case, the smallest positive integer is 1, and we can see that it's the smallest one that we're interested in working with. So on the left-hand side, that's this side here, if we plug in 1 for n, we're just going to get the first term. It's just this one here, but let's just do it with the sum. So you see. Right, so all I've done here is replace the n with 1, right, because we're working with the left-hand side. Plug in 1 and then you stop at 1. 1 times 1 factorial is 1 times 1, which is 1. The right-hand side, plugging in 1, we get 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1. We get 2 factorial minus 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is 2, so we get 1. Hence, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So we have shown the base case is true. We have, we, have, we have shown that it is indeed true. I feel accomplished. <laughs> the base case is the easiest part. So the next part is the induction hypothesis. That's where we get to assume that our statement S sub n is true for some arbitrary positive integer k. We don't know what it is. Okay, so, so this is called the induction hypothesis. Okay, and you write down, so suppose that this sum here, actually, mm, yeah, 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 I guess, I guess I can, we can, I can, I have a choice here, right? I can use this or I can use this. I'm going to use the compact form. Let's, let's, let's stick to the compact form. Suppose that this sum. Oh, 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 for some k. So I, I, I've already used k here, so I'm going to have to use a different letter, which is a, a bit annoying, because usually you use k in the um, inductive hypothesis. In the induction hypothesis, you use k for your n. So what I'm going to do here is, um, hmm, I'm going to use a different letter here. It's a dummy variable, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to use j. I shouldn't have used k up here. I should have used i. I should have used i. Sorry. But this is what happens, right, when you don't 
think clearly when you're not you know, 100% ready to do the problem. Like I didn't look at it. And this is equal to, that's a k. And this will be k plus 1 factorial minus 1. So you replace all the n's with k's. I'm going to come up here and fix this too. I'm going I'm to call this j. Okay, so now we have j's up here, so all is good, right? Just ignore this. We have j's and all is good. Okay, so suppose this is true. And this should also be, yeah, this is good, k, k, k. It's all good. All right, we, the claim, and this is what we have to prove, so I'm going to put it in parentheses. The claim is that this is true for k plus 1. So the claim is that if we start at 1, go to k plus 1, j, j factorial, this will be k plus 1 plus 1, so it'll be k plus 2. Okay, that's the claim. So let's do it. Here's the hard part. So we're going to start with this side here, and we have to show it's equal to this. This is the hardest part of the proof. Okay. And I still, I, I'm just focusing on writing it down correctly. I haven't really thought too much about it, but I have an idea. We're going to break it up. Okay, so that's what we have so far, right? So you somehow have to use this now. Right? That's how induction works, right, when you're doing an induction problem. So I'm thinking, okay, we've got to break this up. So we have to involve this. So let's go to k. We're going to go to k. Notice I'm slowing down here times j factorial. And then the rest of it is just the k plus 1th term. So that's going to be, so this is this. And this piece is outside the sum. I want to emphasize that. That's why I put the parentheses here, okay? So it's k plus 1, k plus 1 factorial. All right? And this piece here, okay, we know what this is, right? We know what this is. This is equal to, from, from, from this, it's going to be k plus 1 factorial minus 1. Right? That's, this is by the induction hypothesis. Okay. Plus, then we have this piece here. Hmm. And we have to get where? We have to get here. Right? So I'm thinking, well, I, I see that we can pull out a k plus 1 uh, factorial. I don't know if it's going to help. Let's try it. I think it will. So we have 1 plus k plus 1. It does help. Minus 1. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's one of those eureka moments. So this is, this is going to be mm, k plus 1 factorial, k plus 2 minus 1. That's where we are. And we're trying to get where? We're trying to get to k plus 2 factorial minus 1. OK, well, the thing is, this here is k plus 2 factorial. Okay, that, this is actually k plus 2 factorial minus 1. And that completes the proof. So that, 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 this shows, so the statement is true for k plus 1. Okay, let me just explain this step again here because it might not be clear to some people. Um, if you have k plus 1 factorial times k plus 2, it's k plus 2 factorial. Why? Uh, I'll squeeze it in down here. So we have k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial, which is k plus 2. k plus 1 factorial is k plus 1, k, k minus 1, dot, 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 times 3 dots, not 4. 3, 2, 1. This is the definition of k plus 2 factorial. Right, so same thing. Right, same thing. So we assume it's true for k. We show it's true for k plus 1. That's um, well, this is the induction step, actually. Induction step. You can break this up into three steps, but there it is. So we, we assume it's true for k, show it's true for k plus 1. By the principle of mathematical induction, it's true for all positive integers n, and so the proof is complete. So you would just say something like, I'm running out of room here. By the principle of mathematical induction, our statement is true for all positive integers n. So kind of an interesting problem because you see that I clearly did not work it out before making the video. And so I made a couple er er not errors, but misguided steps, right? Like I, I use k here. That's not good. I shouldn't have done that. I should have known better. So I fixed it. And then we got here. Also here, 
uh, induction step. I probably should have written that. I like to break it up into induction hypothesis. And then induction step is when you actually show it's true for k plus 1. So in the induction hypothesis, you, you assume it's true for k. In the induction step, you show it's true for k plus 1. And then that's it, right? By the principle of mathematical induction, PMI, it's true for all positive integers n. Hopefully you learned some math. Check out my courses. Links are in the description. Subscribe, like, share. Take care.